Oh, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! Welcome to chapter 158. Rings a bell, doesn't it? 157, no, nine, eight. I reckon eight. Of stories of a salty skinned Skippy. How are we all doing? That one was sent in by listener of the show, Frank. Now that <laughs> surprises me for two reasons. For reason number one, first, firstly, didn't think we'd have anyone who listened to our podcast called Frank. That that shocks me to my core. Because the analytics tell me the general demographic of this podcast is between 16 and 25. Obviously, there's a few outliers in there. I'm sure there's... I think one time we had an 11-year-old. I think I asked who's the youngest person who listens to this podcast and someone claimed that they're 11 years old, which also, that doesn't surprise me. Because, you know... They, they want to listen to someone else with the brain capacity of a child. That's why they're here. So uh, you're welcome. And But Frank, that shocks me because I don't want to discriminate against the name Frank, but let's be honest. Frank is an old man name. Frank is not 18 to 25. I've never met a young Frank. I've only ever met a, an over 40 Frank. So I would love to know if that's a fake name, Frank. Please do let me know during the week. And I would also love to know who's the oldest person that does listen to this podcast. Like, can we get a, a I reckon, in the 40, 50s, maybe in the 50s. There's someone in their 50s who might listen. I don't know why, but let, let me know. And um, that'd be great. Send me an email, luke.kidgel at gmail.com or hit me up on the gram. Because I reckon there'd be a few... Uh, Adams, that listen to this podcast, plenty of Jacks, uh, a few Christinas, heaps of Stephs, Sarahs, um, maybe even an Abby might tune in, an Amelia, um, but never, never thought I'd get a Frank. That's unbelievable. I've never even met a Frank that's that's my age. I'm talking about like at a party. You know, you never like unless you walked into the kitchen where all the parents are talking, but you never like, <laughs> that makes me sound like I'm going to a bunch of 15th. So I just realized, I just remember in high school parties, how weird was that? When you go to your friend's house, like their 16th, even 18th, 21st, there's family and stuff there. And it's just funny. Like you go in the kitchen, it's just where the parents are hanging out, eating springy rolls, you know, smashing, like just smashing champagnes and uh, crownies. Just all the dads there. That's where you meet your Franks. But you're never in the backyard area where the dance floor is. You never meet a Frank before 10 p.m. until the parents migrate across the party to dance to Jesse's Girl at 11 p.m. You never meet a Frank until late in the night at a 21st unless you've ventured inside. That's what I'm talking about. That's why I just I saw that one come in from Frank. Not only was it a good suggestion for, for the title, which, by the way, you can keep sending in your intros because I'm running low. So if you've got another way to say memoirs of a white guy, hit me up. Okay, I would be really really appreciative of that. Uh, or just comment it below, whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, also the podcast has moved channels, obviously, because you're watching it on that channel. Or if you're listening to it, it doesn't affect you. But it is now on the Luke Kidgel podcast channel. Now, the second reason why Frank's email threw me off was not because a little bit because I was just like, why the fuck is there a Frank listening? But the second reason is he called me a, a skippy at the end, which I assumed was like calling me Australian. Now, Frank, again, don't want to judge a book by its name <laughs> or a human by its name, but Frank seems like an Australian guy. When I read that Frank, I was like, that's a guy from Hopper's Crossing who's shooting me an email. Or that is a guy from just outside Logan in Brisbane and he's just decided to contact the podcast. Good on you, Frank. But when he said salty skinned Skippy, I went, that sounds like a foreigner being slightly racist uh, towards us Australians. They've seen the show Skippy the Kangaroo and been like, he's one of them. And send that, you know, for example, if I had have seen 
if that have come in from a foreign name, perhaps more of like an Enrique or something like that, then I would have been like definitely an international listener mocking my Australianness, which by the way, I love that. You know, you got to be able to take a joke. Happy to be uh, called Crocodile Dundee in comment sections. Uh, I wonder what Australians think of, sorry, I wonder what Americans and UK people think of us, really. I wonder what they truly think of us. I think it's the stereotypes of what they think of our fucking culture. I mean, people who listen to this podcast probably know more about Australian culture because I just talk about it, but I wonder what, like, because all I think of Americans is what I say on TV, and I just think you're all fucking morons. I know that you're not all morons, and that's, that you know, but I just watch your reality TV shows. I was watching this new Netflix show, uh, the part of it called The Floor is Lava, and it's where people just, like, get over obstacles, and the show's fine. I'm, I think I'm going to do a video on it, but the show's not even that bad. It's kind of like Wipeout. It's just like an obstacle course show, but the people on it are infuriating. I've never, they're so American. I was watching these guys try and get across it and they're like wearing matching American flag singlets. Like when Australians drape flags around us and stuff, it's because we're on the piss and it's Australia Day and we're being kind of ironic. If we went on an Australian game show, you would never see people with Australian, like, or if not, they'd be fucking outcasted. It's just weird. Why are you guys so patriotic over there? Anyway, guys, I shouldn't start off this podcast by trashing our international listeners. But fuck me, America. Get your shit together. In general, slash also your reality TV show, your contestants are insufferable to watch. I know ours aren't much better. And it's not a good way to judge an entire country of watching their reality TV shows. Because if you watched our reality TV shows, you'd be like, oh, Australians are trash. And you'd be correct. Um, anyway, guys, what did I want to talk about? Dude, I'm just feeling the, the burn. It's the only way to put it. Actually, Reese, who edits this podcast, can you just chuck in the clip of me right before the podcast, just sitting down? That is the best way to describe to you guys how I'm feeling. This was me 20 seconds before I hit play on the song. Ugh. Bruh. <laughs> That's it. That's the fucking burn right there. That was seven days of just processing that I had to do then sitting down. I helped my brother move house just before lockdown started. The day before, my brother was moving house. So we had a huge day moving shit. So I'm lifting furniture. I got the burn from there. Yesterday, I hit the world gym for the first time in a month. I've been quiet about the well gym for good reason because I wasn't out there. The well gym for me recently has been like the majority of people with their gym memberships. I have one. We all got a membership to the well gym. It's free. Get out there and use it. But like many people, I've got the membership and I just choose not to go during winter because it's cold and rain sucks and it makes my hair wet. <laughs> no, it just it sucks. It just it sucks to run in the rain. I never know if my uh, stuff is completely waterproof because I like running with my headphones. And it says water resistant on the packet, but can you trust it? You know? Um, so, yeah. Did six kilometers last night out in the well gym, which is a pretty big first session back. I'm not one of those people that can just taper or, like, just take it easy. You know, just get back into it. Start off light, then build up. If I'm out there, I fully go in with the plan to take it easy. Then I start running. Right, first K, I'm like, fuck, I'm feeling good. I haven't lost it at all. Then I keep running. I get like 2K out from where I started. And I'm like, okay, I should probably turn back now because that's 4K and that is plenty for your first session back loop. Then I was like, nah, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to run 3K out. I got 3K out, I'm fucked. And then I'm like, okay, I have to run 3K back. Now I'm pretty unfit at the moment. Probably the most unfit I've been in a while since like I got pretty fit during the first stage of lockdown. And now I've definitely back to where I started, which is, I feel like a sloppy mess. I just feel like a flubber knot at the moment. I got fat shamed on Meg's TikTok, got 25,000 views, was pretty pissed off about that. Uh, but I respect the game, you know, you got to get them views. 
Uh, it was a video, you might have seen it, it was on her Instagram as well, where she compared me to the Grinch. Now, the Grinch isn't known for having a great rig or being a great guy in general, so it was a pretty rough comparison. The worst part was when I was getting into bed a couple of weeks ago, I just took off my shirt, hopped into bed, and she just goes, Meg just goes, you look, you look like the Grinch. And that was before the video, and I'm assuming she spent a week mulling that over, then came up with the grand idea to make a TikTok comparing me directly to it. And the brutal part about it was people in the comments just um, going, fuck, this is spot on. Uh, so, yeah, as usual, nothing like a little bit of online bullying to kick you back into gear. So, went out there, uh, tried to de-grinch myself, and I pulled up rat shit. Terrible. My uh, body battery last night went down to five on my watch. If you don't know, got a sports watch. I'm a stats man. Uh, I am the type of guy who thinks it's hella fun to weigh yourself before and after you poo because I love stats. I'm a scientist. Don't judge me. Uh, And the best part about having this watch is you get so many stats on yourself. I check it all the time. Currently, my body battery is at 60, which is out of 100. But that's because... I I fucked myself so hard this week, you know, a lot of intensity happening, furniture lifting. I also uh, went outside, had a crack at those weeds again. I'll get to that soon. Weed War 2. And yeah, my squat game is sore. No, my squat game is weak, which means I'm sore because I was squatting for an hour pulling out weeds. And yeah, I can feel the burn. It's been a big week, but now Victoria's in lockdown again. And to be honest kind of excited about it. I get to just chill out a little bit. I mean, you know, no more helping my brother move house. He can do the rest himself. I'm not allowed to. It's illegal. So yeah. Um, Anyway, back to my stats. Uh, I'm currently at a 70 stress level out of 100, which seems high, but it never really gets below a 50 unless I'm just sitting down watching a movie. If I'm like up and just walking around the shops, it'll just be at a 70. And I'm trying to tell my watch, I'm like, I'm not that stressed about it. I know what to do. It's Woolies, you know, go in, buy some wheat bix some crumpets, noodles, dip, Savoy's, milk, get the fuck out of there. Okay. I shop like an 11 year old. It's not stressful, you know, get some Doritos if they're on special, walk up the, uh, bis- the, the, the Bicky aisle, peruse the Arnott section. Are there Scotch fingers on special? Yes, no. Boom, beep, scan my everyday rewards card, go the fuck home. There's nothing stressful about that experience, but my watch disagrees every single time. Very frustrating. Um, And I've done 1,148 steps today. That's not much. I haven't left the house. That's why. Um, And it's also only lunchtime. So, you know, I might go for a run this afternoon. Probably not. Pretty sore. Um, But I like to think. I like, that's that's me. I'm an optimist. You know, there's no point in ruling it out early in the day. Too many go people go, no, nah, I'm not going to go for a run today. Oh, you've already ruled it out. You fucked it. I often wait till it gets dark and go, oh, now I can't go. Oh, well, I wanted to. So I did half the job. I just didn't actually go for the run. Nah, we'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> um, I do want to get fit again. Now there's no excuse because it's locked down and uh, I got nothing else to do. I'm so jealous. Now's the part where I'm actually jealous of the other states. Like Perth, they're locked down. No, sorry, they're they're good. They're they're not locked down. There's like, I've been watching Rory Lowe's. He's a comedian friend of mine. He's been back doing stand-up to like full crowds. He filmed the front. No one's social distancing, just lining up. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, Sydney, they're back out having fun on the beers. Northern Territory, let's be honest, they probably never even really locked down. They opened the pubs ages ago. Uh, Adelaide, not sure what's happening there. No one ever reports on it. Probably nothing like usual. Um, Adelaide on lockdown, nothing would have changed. No one fucking goes out anyway, except for on Hindley Street. That place is a fucking dirt hole. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I just feel a little bit left out. A lot of people shitting on Victorians. You know what I think is funny? (laughs) Victorians getting annoyed. Like even in the discords I'm in this week, like the Luke and Lewis one of mine, you know, people going, ha ha, suck shit, Victoria letting the team down. 
And all these Victorians start arcing up, going, no, we're just doing more testing, blah, 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 blah. Hey, you don't have to get offended on behalf of a state. You individually probably aren't letting the team down, okay? There's six million people that live here. You don't have to defend all of them in a fucking Discord chat or in a comment section on Facebook. You see it all the time. People making jokes about Victoria. Then Victorians are like, um, actually, and it's like, hey, doesn't matter. You can't, you're not going to change it with your stupid Facebook posts. So just stay the fuck inside and then we'll be smashing beers like everyone else soon enough. You know, it's, it sucks, but, uh, you know, throw the shade my way. Happy to take it. I got no comeback. We fucked it up. We are the America of Australia right now. We lost. We are, we're, I think we're at 280 new cases today in Victoria alone. That's bad. That's like double what it was at its original peak. By the way, I'm just throwing out stats that I think are true right now, which is like the majority of the podcast. So if you ever hear something on this podcast, except for that fanging it fact that I dropped last week, if you didn't hear that, actually worth going to listen to last week. A few people uh, already said to me that they are, thanks for that fact, mate. Dropped it in in a group chat this week. few people were pretty impressed. Ah, you're welcome. Least I could do. Um, so, yeah, Victoria back in lockdown, which means I'm just straight up chilling. Uh, we've got Zoom beers happening uh, this weekend, the 18th. If you're in my Discord, feel free to jump on the Patreon. Uh, we do that every month. It's super fun. We just all chat, make fun of one another. I'm sure there'll be Victorians arguing with our interstate people. Uh, we often argue about food, palmers, palmy. That's heated debate pretty regularly. Um, yes, yeah, so if you want to get in there, argue with some strangers over a video call. And uh, it's not just arguing. We also all get along because it's uh, all very fun. But um, yeah, jump in. It's always good fun. Uh, what else has been going on? I wrote down some stuff. Oh, okay. Okay. I've been bloody blabbering on here and uh, forgot to talk about this. Last week, made a huge call on this podcast. Cursor dissed me. Australian rapper, Cursor, the sickest. He said, just because you got verified on Instagram, you're not verified in the streets. I was not happy about this at all. I came out, made a huge call and said, I'm going to do something that no Australian would ever think to do, would ever dare to do, would ever dream to do. I'm going to fuck with Cursor. I understand how big that call is. Do I regret it? Fuck no. Has there been a couple of updates during the week? Yes. Now, I did ask people, I think it's a little bit unorthodox, apparently. Don't know why. But um, I did ask people to send in their submissions uh, saying, how should I fuck with Cursor? Um, which are people going, are you seriously uh, soliciting ways to to win this rap beef? Absolutely. Uh, this one came in uh, from Jack. Love this one from Jack, except it involves me knowing where he lives, which I don't, but I love the energy. Uh, he said, hi, Luke. Not sure if Cursor has a car, but if he does, maybe uh, over a string or two of three days, uh, you could flip up his windscreen wipers. That would inconvenience him a bit. Love that, Jack. Now, that's the right energy that I'm going for because, again, I don't want to fuck with Cursor, you know, because I, I actually like his music, respect him as an artist. He hustles. Um, love the fact that he made uh, a career out of essentially nothing. Fuck the mainstream media vibe. Respect that hustle. But also, uh, he did diss me. <laughs> And uh, hang on, there's a couple more suggestions. Uh, a few people doing uh, similar stuff like that. A couple of people saying you can get him with the old smell the cheese, uh, where you just, oh, smell the cheese. Then he, he ideally, Cursor puts his nose up to my fingertips and I just whack him in the nose. Again, that's assault. Um, not the right thing I was looking for, but I love that schoolyard energy still. Uh, was thinking I could maybe... Uh, say if he called me a loser right maybe i could get him on the phone and he goes i provoke him to, to diss me again 
And then I say, I know you are, but what am I? I know you are, but what am I? And he'll just get so frustrated that he'll hang up and therefore I've successfully fucked with Cursor. Again, these are just ideas. I'm still in the spitballing stage here. Uh, I do have a couple of other ones that were sent in and I appreciate all these people trying to help me win this rap beef because again, it's foreign territory for me. I've never been in a rap beef before. Um, oh man, I've lost some of these during the week. I need, can you please send them over email? A lot of people DM me and it's really hard for me to keep track of it because I get a lot of DMs. Um, oh fuck. I forget. You can't search via topic either. That's so annoying guys. There were more suggestions, but I've I'm sorry if you suggested something, but I just cannot find it. Please send me an email, luke.kidgel at gmail.com. That is the podcast email for any correspondence. It just means I can search up what you talked about a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, thank you for your suggestions. However, during the week, there was a bombshell. I was talking to my dear friend, well, my ex-dear friend, Lewis Spears, about the issue because he is friends with Cursor. He actually organized the voice, the, the message in which Cursor dissed me on. But I did not know the information that you're about to hear. So this is us talking on our Luke and Lewis Patreon podcast. So you wouldn't have heard this on the actual Luke and Lewis episode because it was on the uh, secret podcast. So shut the fuck up. Okay, but it was on the Patreon podcast. Uh, you didn't hear it from me. That podcast is top secret. No one's supposed to know about it. Um, but yeah, this is what Lewis said on that podcast. I do have a confession. Uh, I actually wrote... Uh, you might be verified on Instagram, but you're not verified in the streets. So you I actually to say that I actually ghost wrote the diss, Whoa. Um, which is a big confession from me, because uh, he said, "What should I say?" And I said, "You should say this." And he thought that was very funny. So, uh, well, this changes everything. Not only has uh, you know cursor dissed you, it was actually written by me. No, this um, changes everything. I now hold you. 100% responsible and I would like to redirect <laughs> my this. feud. You I'm, can't do that. I'm going to fuck with Lewis Smith. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, that's, no, you can't do this. I told you that on good faith. <sighs> Deary me. What to do? So now I guess I'm stuck in this a conundrum. Whereas do I put 100% of the blame, like I just said there, on Lewis because he wrote the diss because technically Cursor is now the messenger and you don't shoot the messenger. You don't fuck with the messenger. I guess unless the messenger's Cursor. Because you don't fuck with Cursor though, but I do want to. So you can see how conflicted I am. So I, I guess I want to hear where you guys, what you guys think I should do here. I guess I'm at a little bit of a crossroads here. Should I fuck with Lewis Spears? Because he technically wrote the diss and Cursor was just the middleman in the situation. Or... Do I keep directing the fuckery, the that fuck energy towards Cursor? Let me know. Sound off below. I know this is a long play and this seems now like it's going to go over multiple weeks, but I did make a promise to fuck with Cursor and I don't like letting people down in this podcast. Once I made a promise to get Osha Ginsberg as a guest as uh, for episode 100 and we still haven't done episode 100 yet. We just went from 99 to 101 because I don't want to break a promise, right? So we're still going to get Osher on. I'm not sure when, might be in 10 years. Um, might have to go to his grave in 50 years when he's dead and just interview him there. But either way, we will do it, okay? So um, yeah, let me know. How do I, should I fuck with Lewis Spears or should I fuck with Cursor? Because currently I'm mad at both of them and I don't know where to put my anger, uh, which is a bummer. Uh, you know what um, Meg and I were talking about before, right? As you do, just classic chat with your girlfriend. We were talking about if we died, uh, what songs and stuff and how, how we want our funeral to play out. We're talking about what songs we want in our funeral and just like in general, what the vibe of the funeral would be. And I realized I was like to Meg, I was like, no one would know what song to play at my funeral. And she was like, mm, 
What about like, you know, something like All Star by by Smash Mouth? I was like, that's good. Because I just live this really odd lifestyle where people are like, what's it actually, what is he actually like? I mean, I know he likes Smash Mouth and Bowling for Soup and Blink-182 and Fall Out Boy. But is that what he, yes, it is. But you can't really play Sugarware going down or all the small things at a funeral. It just doesn't fit the tone. You know, like everyone's walking in slowly and it's like, nah, 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 nah. It just doesn't fit the vibe. So Meg was like, what would you want to be played at your funeral? And I've decided my funeral song, and fuck, I hope I don't die this week because this is actually what I told her. Um, my ideal funeral song is just, um, your best friend, honestly, <laughs> this is the best night ever. That's what it would be, man. Because I'd had all, I had all, oh, did I just go on a loop? Did I just stutter? I just turned into a robot. Reese, do a replay. Because I'd had all, I had all, oh, fuck. I caught myself buffering there. That was some fucking... Dial up brain shit. Damn. Um, I'd had all I, oh, I did it again. I can't say that. I'd have all my friends there, right? And and everyone would know. And honestly, this is the best night ever. And I'd obviously have my funeral at night because it'd be fucking there'd be kick-ons afterwards. That would be mad. You'd have a little ceremony, we'd all be sad for a little bit, and then I just want the boys to get on it, you know? Just at the reception. Is that what they call it? The wake. The, re- the reception's a wedding. Is it a wake? I forget what the funeral one's called. By the way, it wouldn't be that. It'd just be this. this song. And honestly, if I die tomorrow, I want the Janoskians to be played at my funeral. Don't listen to my family. Don't listen to anyone who says no. Okay? If you find this tape... I want this song. Woo! And also, if anyone questions that at the funeral, have this clip ready to put on, like a projector. And <laughs> play this. Everyone's like, why, why are the Janoskians playing? They're like, oh, it was his last request. Now I kind of hope I die this week. <laughs> I don't. But also, that would be hilarious. What a way to go out. That was just my dying wish. Woohoo! Woohoo! This is the best night ever! Oh! Yeah! (laughs) Dude, imagine like, just like my grandma there. And she's just like fist bumping. Like, I fucking love Bo and Jai and whatever their fucking names are <laughs> fucking what are their names luke luke brooks jai brooks i forget they, they one of them had my name i think dude that's awesome oh man and then in the wake when they serve the cake they can have this one real girls eat cake I'm still obsessed with the Janoskians. I think it's the funniest part of Australian history. I really do. I think it should be taught in schools. Like, they're just like, yeah, still learn about Ned Kelly, First Fleet, all that. Right? I get it. Um, just, Just throw it in for one session where you just learn about that weird period in, like, 2010 where people were like... Dude, the Janoskians should be a band. <laughs> that guy, those guys who hump each other on the train, they should be a band. Now, I spend way too much time on this podcast talking about the Janoskians, but guys, it's really funny to me. <laughs> Fuck, it's so good. Oh, man. That's amazing. I love it so much, dude. This one, I'm obsessed with this one. I've already done this on the podcast, but we're doing it again. They did this, like, pop-punk song. It's like a Disney song. Man, I just want the Janoskians put on a repeat at my funeral. That would be so sick. 
obviously the coffin would be like really heavy because I've got that Grinch bot at the moment. So they'd be like fawns struggling. They'd be like, and then you just hear, and they're like, a tear is just going down their eyes. And, I'm, and then it cuts to Meg in the corner and she's just fucking raging because she's like, this was his dying wish. I'm the only person who finds this funny. <laughs> oh, fuck. I think I just do this podcast at this point to amuse myself. <laughs> it's like, you know, one for you and then 10 for me is this podcast. That's the ratio. One episode I do for you guys and the next nine, it's just me fist bumping to the dinner. <laughs> Most other podcasts like plan content and like talk about, you know, the global chaos that is occurring. The world's on fire and I'm just planning my Janoskian's theme funeral. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm hilarious. Guys, I need to get back on stage. The world needs me. All right. I feel like I'm, uh, the world needs this comedy in their life. It, people aren't getting it at the moment and it sucks. My, my favorite song for real though is um, The Adventure by Angels and Airwaves. It's an absolute tune. And uh, speaking of favorite songs, I did want to say, a few people are often fascinated with the music that I like. Now, if you haven't heard the episode that I do with Radio Mike about music, it's called the Pop Punk episode of Memoirs of a White Guy. Go check it out if you're into that music. It's a hella fun listen if you are, because we just go through the ages and talk about pop punk for an hour and a half, like 15-year-old boys. Um, and I actually, cause, cause I know a lot of people are always asking me about music cause it's just, people just know it's the thing I'm into. I've actually made a bunch of Spotify playlists for you guys to jam out to. Now I'm not sure how Spotify works. I just know that in the past people have followed my playlists, like 145 people have liked the ultimate pump bops playlist. So I don't know how people found that. I don't know if you search Luke Kidgel or if you search the playlist name, but there's a bunch of people who like the tambourine tour pre-show playlist, right? So um, there's also my certified Bang Lords playlist, which I haven't updated in a while. But anyway, just for any music fans listening, <clears throat> I've made some playlists of some of my favorite bands. So I've what I do is like I make it's mainly for running, by the way. So you gotta factor in that often I leave out the band's slower songs because I don't want to run to like their the slow hit, you know, the, the ballad one. Um, so all my favorite fallout boy songs. So they're one of my favorite bands, uh, are in a playlist called fallout. Yeah. The boys, um, all my favorite Foo fighters songs. Cause they're one of my favorite bands. The playlist is called everybody was Kung Fu fighting. Um, again, this is just for people who are into it. So you can skip to a few minutes on, right. If you're not interested in this, uh, all my favorite Panic at the Disco songs are in a playlist called Significantly Distressed at the Dance Party. Um, that's a good one. I, I usually spend half the time thinking of the playlist name and then half the time actually selecting and curating the playlist. And then I have another playlist just called Aussie Songs for Bogan Drongs. Now, I haven't finished all these playlists yet, so... Bear with me. They will be all updated. But if you want to go follow any of these and have a jam to it, if you're a fan of, you know, say if you want to get back into your 15-year-old past and just listen, listen to some significantly distressed at the dance party, um, then, yeah, go listen to Panic. Uh, my best of Green Day playlist is called Boulevard of Broken Creams. Uh, my best of Paramore is called Paraheaps. Very clever. Well done, Luke. Uh, professional comedian. Pat yourself on the back. Um... I also have a random playlist called I Shouldn't Like These But I Do. Um, and in that is just burning up. All by yourself. Because I do like that song. Completely unironically enjoy it. So go eat dicks. Cool. Um, I shouldn't, but I do. I also have a playlist called Pop That Pops, Fap Rap, which is all my favorite rap music. Um, and hip hop blink 180 true is all my blink 182 hits. And I also have a day to remember, uh, which is all my favorite, a day to remember songs. Now we'll make some more, but again, I'm just, I don't get a lot of time 
to do with this stuff, but I am making playlists because I know people are very fascinated for some reason with what music I listen to. How about you stop being cheap and get a music taste of your own? All right. Also the music, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call me my music taste like something to look up to. It's not something to aspire to. It's like, wow, you know, who's my musical role model? Luke Kidgel, who still listens to bands from 2005. Uh, and unironically enjoy some of the Jonas Brothers songs. So, yeah. You want to go follow any of those? Oh, and My Chemical Bromance is all my favorite My Chem songs. Um, Day to Remember, Blink-182, Fap Rap, Para Heaps, Boulevard of Broken Creams, Significantly Distressed at the Dance Party. That's my favorite name. And uh, Fallout, Yeah, The Boys. So, um, yeah. And also there's a general pop punk playlist called Pop Punk for Thick Hunks. <laughs> Again, I guys, I got a lot of free time. Um, so yeah, those are my Spotify playlists. If you want to go follow them, I don't know how it works, but whatever. Now the last thing, the final thing I want to talk about before we wrap it up. Today's been a real oddball of an episode. Um, is and by the way, let's do questions next episode because I'm like back locked in now and not a lot's been happening. So um, yeah. Questions, luke.kidgel at gmail.com. If you just want me to help you, life advice, or if you, you know, questions about me are pretty boring. You guys know a lot about me by now. So maybe like life advice, if you've got a query, don't send me that, oh, like a girl in my class bullshit. Talk to her. Stop being a bitch. Um, I want some serious life advice. You know, something crazy is happening in your life or something funny that will lead to funny content. You guys get the drill. All right, luke.kidgel at gmail.com uh, if you enjoy this podcast. And um, yeah, thanks to everyone who tells their friends about this as well. It's very cool. Um, so last thing I want to talk about, guys, I've come around on Marvel movies. I'm a changed man. In the past, I've been not anti, no, actually probably pretty anti-Marvel. As a whole, I like, I used to say, yeah, I like Iron Man and Captain America, but I don't know. The rest is just stupid and they don't interest me. I've started watching them with Meg in order throughout the Marvel Universe. And God damn, I'm, I'm pretty hooked at this point. I do think there's some ones that really let it down that are all great. Um, even the first Avengers, as people might disagree, but I just go like, yeah, it's fine. Like it's... It's ideal. It's not ideal. But I'm just, now that it's all building, and I've never saw Endgame when it came out or Infinity War. I think that's where I'm up to. I think I just watched, I think we, the next one we're up to is Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So we're almost at the end of the saga. But I, we started off with Captain America, and I always loved those ones. So that was a good way to start. I really liked Ant-Man. Thought that one was sick. The best one was Civil War. Um, where Captain America fights Iron Man. Now, I know you guys are like, yeah, Luke, we remember this from five years ago. This is all new to me because I just saw these films when it came out and I was like, yep, superheroes fighting each other. Cool. I'll go do anything else. I'll go fucking listen to the Janoskians like a real man. And I missed out at the time. I just was never into it. I've always been like way more of a Star Wars guy and even like more of a DC guy, even though a lot of the DC movies suck. Wonder Woman's sick. The Batman ones are awesome. I've never seen Batman vs Superman, but uh, who knows? Uh, but the you know Dark Knight and shit, um, and Deadpool was fucking awesome, and the Justice League sucked actually. So yeah, I think I'm I'm more of a Marvel man now, and I just wanted to update you all. That's it. I, I'm a changed man, and I will no longer be publicly trashing the Marvel films. There is some merit to it. They are quite mind numbing at times, but that's what you want. That's what this podcast is. That's what my whole vibe is. Uh, just, I, I come out of a Marvel movie. I'm like, Oh, my brain's mush because I just watch superheroes punch each other up for an hour and a half. And then it's, then you just go to bed and you wake up the next day. And you're like, that was pretty awesome. That was cool. Um, and that's where I'm at with it. So guys, I'm, I've come around. The Avengers are cool. I retract my statement. Okay, it's the mile of movie sagas. It's a fucking seven, and that's good. People need to remember that's good. I called Milo a seven out of ten, and people got angry at me. A seven is good. Okay, whatever habit five is average. Think about it. People always go, oh, fucking 
10. 9 and 10 are the only good ones. Anything below is an 8 sucks. No. 1 is terrible. 4 is pretty bad. 5 is okay. 6 is pretty good. 7 is like, yeah, I liked it. 8 is like, it was great. 9 is like, bro, you got to see this fucking Avengers movie. So good. And 10 is like coming over Robert Downey Jr.'s fucking mask. You know? 10 is spider Manning out of your dick. Oh, and Spider-Man's awesome. Spider-Man is a fucking 10. I love Tom Holland, dude. That Spider-Man movies are sick. Anyway, guys, that's it. That's it from me on this podcast. How long have I gone for? Enough. Oh, no. Have I not been gone for enough time? Guys, maybe I should do a question. All right, I do have one question from ages ago. And uh, let's just finish it off here. This is from Rick. And he said, what are your thoughts about underage drinking? Uh, this was from ages ago when I asked for Instagram questions and I just wrote down the good ones in case I ever ran out of content, which I have today. Um, so, uh, what are my thoughts on underage drinking? I mean, at the moment, it's not really a problem, at least in Melbourne, because no one's hanging out with their friends. Uh, I just think kids are trying to grow up too fast these days. That's what I actually think. I, I never underage drank. I'm not against it. I just think it's so unnecessary. Uh, I didn't drink till schoolies and then I drank for the first time. I've told this story on the podcast many a times, but just in case you've never heard it, uh, the first time I drank, I didn't know how to drink because no one in my family ever did. So I didn't know like how to mix vodka and lemonade, which sounds so stupid now. I realize how insane this is, but I didn't know the, what ratio to do. So I just did like, like a third or a half even of vodka and then just like put a little sprinkle of lemonade. I was like, oh, that'll make it taste good. And then I just started drinking. And then I passed out by 8 p.m. the first night. And I started drinking about 4.30 p.m. So lasted uh, about three and a half hours, which is pretty good for your first time. And I threw up in uh, my ex-girlfriend's hair. And then, yeah, people put me to bed and I threw up all over the floor of an Airbnb, which I wasn't even paying for. So that was a real great start. And then I, to be honest, didn't really enjoy drinking until like I was like 20. Cause I was just like, no, nah, it's not for me. Cause I had a few bad experiences early, but then once I got on the beers and worked out how to drink and how to not just binge yourself fucking. So you get blind every time that I never get really drunk anymore. Like at all, I, I, the last time I threw up was, uh, at the, the, like the, um, management's after party, like the Verve party last year at, during the comedy festival, I threw up in the back of an Uber and it charged me out and they charged me 150 bucks, um, to clean it. That was the last time I threw up was like April, 2019. I mean, it's not that long ago. It's over a year ago though. And before that though, I hadn't thrown up in like another year. So I feel like I throw up like. Maybe once a year from drinking, I'll go really hard one night, but I don't really care. I just like, it's not, it doesn't interest me. It's, it's shit. It make it makes you feel shit the next day. It's not worth it. Um, so I would say to kids, if you look, oh, but I want to drink and I'm 17, you've got your whole life to be a fucking idiot. Just calm down. There'll be plenty of nights where you regret drinking. All right. You don't need to do it when you're 17. Well, I know, I know people do. I know it's not going to change anyone's mind. I don't really care if you do. It's just that, um. I think it's just a, it's, you know, why it's, but fair enough when you're 17 or whatever, when you're like 16 and stuff, dude, there's people who start drinking when they're 14. Like, what are you doing? I think it's just a thing of like, oh, it's cool and rebellious. <laughs> it's kind of cute, actually. It's just like, oh, you know, like, look at me, mom. <laughs> and then like you down like a UDL and you're like, I'm a fucking, woo, you are my best friend. You are my fucking best friend. That's kind of the vibe. Um, of underage drinking. It's just like a real Janoskian's vibe. <laughs> it's like, I'm 15 and I don't know what's good yet. <laughs> so, um, yeah, those are my thoughts on underage drinking. I, th I know there's probably some underage people who might disagree with me, but Luke, I fucking love getting on it with the fellas. Well, you might turn out to be a degenerate. Or, may or maybe not, because a lot of people underage drink and... I don't know. It doesn't really ha seem to have much of an effect on people's brains. Maybe it does. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but, um, 
Yeah, that's it. You've got your whole life to be a fucking idiot. Just calm down. Chill out. Wait till you're 18. Be a responsible boy would be my advice. Or girl. Um, so, so, uh, that's it, guys. I'm just going to give you a body battery update and then we'll fucking end the podcast. My body battery is sitting at 55. So it's gone down a little bit. A little Pretty exhausting doing this podcast. Um, I love this watch, man. So good. I'm a scientist. It's great because I'm the scientist and I'm also the experiment. So I just like go for a run and then I'm like, oh, how did I do? Beep, 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 beep. And then I'm just that asshole who's checking his sports watch at the park instead of experiencing life. Uh, so yeah, in, hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. It is now on the second channel. If you're an audio listener and you're looking for the video, uh, go subscribe to Luke Kidgel Podcast. And um, yeah, there's also clips if you don't have time to listen to the full episode every single week uh, up on Luke Kidgel Podcast. Go check it out. Reese is doing an awesome job uh, who puts this podcast together. So yeah, go make it worth uh, my money and his time uh, and go watch him. So <laughs> that is all. See you guys next week. Uh, Patreon Zoom beers on the 18th, the Saturday, this Saturday, the 18th at 8.30 p.m. Join us. It's heaps of fun. And yeah, woohoo! Bye!